invisible in ordinary ways. It is a crisis of confidence. The erosion of our confidence in the future is threatening to destroy the social and the political fabric of America. That was President Jimmy Carter warning America about itself and its outlook in the so-called malaise speech that he gave in 1979. Carter was widely lambasted for the speech and in some quarters still is. But if you flash forward to 2014, with America's faith in the president, in Congress, even the Supreme Court, at historic lows, add to that a new Wall Street Journal NBC News poll that says 76% of Americans 18 and older say they're not confident that their children's generation will fare better than their own. The children faring better than, than you do, that's the American dream. Uh, and so there's a real concern out there and... Uh, it's based on one fact, your economy has to grow. So when I lived better than my brothers, they thought I was spoiled. They wanted my parents to still treat me the way they were treated. And my parents said, we were not in poverty, but close to it. Welcome to America. Each generation leads a better life because our economy grew about 4% a year. That meant every 18 years, it doubled. Um, it's growing at 1% or 2%. So you're not being un-American. You're just telling the truth. You're not going to be better off if your economy is growing at 2% or, or less. But the, the economy has been growing in the last few years. Most people still think we're in a recession, even though technically, not technically we're not. But none of the none of the benefits seem to be coming back to individuals. It, it feels like wages aren't going up. It feels like people are having a... While prices... And well, expenses are, and I th and I also sorry. I also think that there's a feeling that there are benefits going to a very small segment of the population, and that is widely felt. I mean, you look at some of what's been going on in in terms of just executives, and in terms of the amounts that they are getting, and you compare that to most Americans, and there's a real concern that unless your kid is a member of that top one, two, three, four, five percent, there is no hope that they are going to even match you, let alone get up there. So and Hillary so it's that Clinton wild speech, inequality. She gives a speech at UConn. Uh, she's given $250,000 for a puny speech. Absolutely. And so it's they're seeing their leaders uh, rake it in. Absolutely. They're seeing their leaders rake it in. Every single one of them. And it's not just Hillary Clinton. It's every single one of them. Republican, Democrat. It's this elite. That's why when Hillary Clinton said that ridiculous thing about coming out of the White House and feeling like she was in poverty. Yeah, in comparison to the people she hangs out with, she must feel like she's in poverty. <laughs> but she's not in poverty compared to the most Americans. And so that is widely felt. I can tell you, I talk to my students and they are concerned about whether after they, you know, have these enormous student loans, are they even going to be able to get a job for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year, let alone pay back their loans? That's a huge fear. And, and that difference is is right in everybody's face. I mean, it's you don't have to go far to see it. It's it's on TV. It's on the internet. Sure, it's also in your neighborhood. There are, there are people in your neighborhood or people in your town, clearly doing. So this is what bugs me. Yeah. Uh, if you want to get elected as Republican, you got to be right on gun control and on abortion. And yet that has nothing to do with the future prosperity of, of a child. The future prosperity of a child is, is the economy going to grow more than 2% and is it going to benefit more than just the elite? Well, so That's it, the real issue. But it, there's, I mean, trying to get your kids ahead and get them to do better than you did, that requires education. Education costs are up what, 5,000% than they were 30 years ago? I mean... A billion it, dollars in student loan debt. It, a billion. And so when we in Congress uh, gave a child another 500 or 1,000 in a Pell Grant, a grant, not a loan. The university says you have another $1,000, so we're going to reduce the amount we give by 900. The university got 900 of the 1,000, and the student got 100. How do, how do we, you, I know you said that the, you, the economy needs to get better, and, and if that, is that the panacea here? Is that the, is it's, that the it's cure? The, it's the it, only thing. Is there, there's nothing in terms of people's spirit there's nothing that we can do but that, that you generates can, you hope. You can lie to them. You can say, oh, your life's going to be better, but our economy's still going to grow at 1% or 2%. <laughs> I, I, just, I just think there's a feeling out there that, you know, we always said that if you work hard, you can get ahead, but there's a, a growing feeling that even if you work as hard as you possibly can, fingers to the bone, you might not be able to. But when your economy only grows at the, at the rate it is, wages don't go up, uh, there aren't as many job opportunities, 
I mean, it's pretty simple and straightforward. And I agree that the economy is the big issue, but we're not going to get there until we change our political system and you allow people to work together to make those changes. You cannot, I, I, we've seen this, Bar Barack Obama, there's a lot of promise there. He couldn't come into office and do what he wanted to do. George Bush couldn't come into office and do what he wanted you, you, to you do. You don't have a do-nothing Congress, you have a do-nothing Senate. Yeah. The Congress has passed about 300 bills waiting for the Senate mm -hmm. to act, but the Senate has a rule. We would like to bring up, ask for unanimous consent to bring up Senate Bill 215. Is there an objection? It just takes one objection <laughs> and it's off the calendar for two months. But these are, these are bills that are being passed by the House in large cases that they know full well aren't going to be passed by the Senate and they certainly won't be signed by well, the President. Well, they can amend them. But there used to be a spirit out of Washington that, okay, we're not each going to get all of what we want, but for the benefit of the country, for the well-being of the nation, we can find some common ground and at least advance things forward. And, and that seems to have evaporated from Washington. You must have sensed that. Oh, that has, that has vanished. It's called the Tea Party. No, is it just that? It, no. It's not just that, but it, it's called it the Tea Party. It happened before the Tea Party. Yeah, it, it did, happened with Congress, with Senator Mitchell in Maine. Bush couldn't get bills out. It just takes one senator to, to object. I asked a, a House member, he happened to be a Republican, he got elected to the Senate. How do you like it? He said, I love it. He said, I can kill anything. Mm. <laughs> just one vote, just his vote. He takes it off. 99 senators, and he decides so to take it off. So the politics of no. The politics of no and, on both sides. And, may, and maybe some politicians who are more concerned about doing the right thing than winning re-election. And since that's it's, it's against human me? nature, what, what, that's what not going to that? happen. What, did, did I, there were right some there? of those politicians, right? <laughs> Wait, what? That are more concerned about doing the right thing than winning re-election. Uh, you know what? A president could highlight them. He could wine and dine them. This is a president who has no interest in reaching out. I'm sorry, but you know my thing. Do not set up a system that requires you to be an angel in order to get something done. Let's allow the bozos to be in there and work. <laughs> All right? Well, That's well, ridiculous, Andrew. If, when, we won't want basing to, it on bozos, I can't imagine why people are feeling <laughs> frustrated with their government. We don't want a system where you have to have these amazing, wonderful people who aren't human to, to run it. It's got to be run by humans. All right, and they gonna, have human you know, interests. I, 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 do love the, I do love the argument of people saying you can't compromise. And we've got to respect the Constitution. The Constitution was the biggest document of compromise ever conceived mm. in ever. the history of the <coughs> humanity. All throughout, yeah. all throughout it, multiple compromises as you go through. We want you at home to head to Facebook and Twitter and sound off on this question. The American Dream today, will your children be more successful than you? And while you're at it, if you've got any suggestions on how to help that dream along and how to make the government work better, well, we come up with a few, but we need as many good ideas as we can get. All right, up next, are they making our roads safer, or are they just a new tax and cash cow for governments? Speed cameras generating lots of debate, including here in our region. We're going to have that debate next.